Well, later on today, Ethan Couch will appear in court, and a judge is going to decide whether or not to transfer his case from juvenile to adult court. Now, what exactly does that mean? Scott Palmer is here to tell us that. And, uh, Scott, I guess we start with that. The judge is ruling uh, whether or not he should appear in adult court. Um, that's a, That seems a fairly simple ruling, just a, one decision to make, but there's a lot that goes into this, right? Correct. I think the decision has pretty much already been made by this judge. The the fact that Ethan Couch disappeared and went to Mexico, he basically made the decision for the judge. The judge has to announce it in open court to transfer the case to district court in Tarrant County, and a judge will be assigned to an adult district court judge. And that keeps him on probation until he's 26. It starts. It started when he was 16. It'll continue till he's 26, and he'll be on tight restrictions for the adult from the adult system. Okay, so he turns 19, what, like April 11th. So will will he actually will this actually take effect after that birthday? Then that's I, I think they have to wait till he's actually 19 to actually okay. transfer the case. But he, the decision has to be made obviously prior to that. And I think he'll probably stay in custody as long as the courts can will, will allow. There's usually a 120 day rule on these types of cases that you can spend in jail. He's been in jail. I don't think he gets any credit for staying in Mexico, in the jail in Mexico, by the way. Huh. So he'll uh, he'll be in custody most likely until any judge decides he's had enough time or the statutory ma- maximum number of days has been expired. So I expect him to be remain in custody and then be transferred to, uh, you know, home, home monitoring. He'll be on electronic monitor like his mother is. He'll have tight, tight conditions. Uh, Perrin County is known as a very tough county to be on probation, especially for intoxication, assault, and manslaughter types of cases, they're very strict. And the, the test will be whether Mr. Couch is going to grow up and, and show the world that he can actually do what he's supposed to do. And the statistics are not good for him, but we'll see. So he's going to get assigned a new judge, as you mentioned, who, who will set the revised terms and conditions, essentially, for his probation. Uh, so that, that happens, but, uh, I mean, there's nothing that really can take place as far as breaking this adult probation until he does it again, right? The, the the previous probation violation doesn't apply to adult court, right? Exactly. You're absolutely right. They, he's going to have to violate the new terms and conditions set down by the new district judge that will be assigned to this case. And so that that will be the future. He can't be punished for what he did on the juvenile probation when, when, until he... Um, offends again on on the adult probation. So all that stuff that's happened in the past will not be affected by the the adult transfer. Okay, so the way that I read this thing, he turns 19 on April 11 or whatever it is. He's going to get out at that point, right? He could get out. The judge could uh, require if there's any time left on the, uh, and there should be some, there should be at least 60 days left on the timetable of of the 120 days. You can do jail time as a condition of probation on on adult cases and juvenile cases. So the judge could keep him in jail if he feels like it's necessary to continue to get Mr. Couch's attention. He could release him. He could release him on electronic monitor. He could release him on a myriad of conditions. He could order counseling. He could order uh, treatment. So there's a lot of things the judge could do. So that so then the most then that he could stay in jail is 60 days after April 11. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't. I haven't actually put the pencils sure. in the paper. In front but of but but ru- say it. roughly. I mean, it's not a, it's not as if he's going to be in jail for four years. No, no, he you cannot you cannot exceed 120 days on a case like this. Gotcha. Um, and and that, you know if he if he if he messes his his probation up if he violates any way. He is looking at 10 years in the penitentiary. Um, so there's been some talk that he's looking at 40 years. I disagree with that. Yeah, t- he had four counts of intoxication manslaughter, but it's one probation running concurrently with each other. And, and that 10 years would only kick in if there's a violation once he's transferred to adult court. Right, and, and the, the, that 10 years would have to be discretionary with the court. If they if they tried to revoke him, there's still things that they could do if they wanted to work with him. I doubt, based on his his, his the fact that he's given an opp- been given two opportunities now, that he will have much leeway with this court. I think if he if he violates his probation, he's likely to go to prison. And understand that this is a intoxication manslaughter, so it'll be 50 percent of the time, whatever number he gets between two and ten. If he gets sent to prison, he'll have to do half the time, minimum of two years. Okay, and one other thing, real quick. Monday, his bond was reduced, right, from a, a million dollars to seventy-five thousand. Is that fairly common? It is. I mean, on a on a case, just like his mother's case was reduced from a million to seventy-five thousand. That's no that's no shock. Uh, but he can still, even if he makes bond, he could be returned to jail if the court wanted him to do more additional jail time as a condition of probation. All right, Scott Palmer, thank you very much.